So, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I think we have like m most of most of our people today are Israeli, but we will do it in English uh, because this was established as an English talk. Um, it's the second time. Um, my name is Itai. I'm Itai Novik from Elements of Food. Hi, everybody. Fun. And um, we have Gal here. That's why I need to mark you again. Uh, we have Gal, uh, Gal Ben Moshe, Chef Gal Ben Moshe from Prism, um, who is here with us today uh, to talk about his restaurant and, of course, about um, his future plan because he has a lot of time in his hand right now. Uh, so, Gal Ben Moshe uh, in Berlin since 2012, right? 2012. Um, chef and owner of Prism. Uh, since last year, but he had uh, another restaurant before, which was Glass. Glass was open since 2013, um, almost six years, right, Gal? Gal? Five years. Five years. Uh, then he closed and he opened the uh, Prism, and Prism just won his, its first Michelin uh, star this year, one month ago, actually. Is it like yesterday, one month, or was the third of March, no? or the fourth of March? When when was it? It's no, it's it's, it's more it's more than that. it's the third or the sixth, depends on how you're counting the day of the announcement or the day. Of the thanks for the event. <laughs> and um, unfortunately, because Gal it's been and the month. <laughs> sorry, it's been again for month. It's been an event for <laughs> Um Because Gal is the first Israeli ever winning a Michelin star in Germany and the second in the world. Uh, it's a big honor for him. It's a big honor also to be a restaurant which, I mean, got his first star on the first year. And then two weeks after he had to close the restaurant temporarily uh, because of the situation, of course. Um, and we are going to um, talk a bit about that and about his uh, future plan, of course. Uh, so, Gal, let's start with the most obvious. Um, as someone who is used to uh, cooking each evening and finish around midnight, and now you're home um, cooking each day but for the family, uh, will it be hard for you to get back to, the, to your routine? Um, I don't think so. So um, if you, I, I think a month isn't, uh, you know, um, perception changing. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been doing this for the past eight years of my life and I've had uh, six months before between glass and prison. Yeah. Where I only did um, events and things like that. So I'm, oh, I can't do it. So I have, I have experience in uh, not cooking actively in a, restaurant kitchen for hmm. uh, six months but uh, uh, um, it's, it's different because uh, my average age is five and uh, but it's also fun and uh, I get to kind of uh, reconnect with my family and uh, reconnect with myself in the, um, after all the sacrifices and compromises that I've made about my what's what I want in the past uh, yeah. few years. So yeah. uh, it's an interesting experience. Uh, I'm very fortunate to be going through it in Germany and not in a country where there is no uh, support or um, the feeling of support mm -hmm. for small businesses. Yeah. Um, so yeah, very grateful to be going through it in Germany, and I I guess. Just uh, uh, trying to look at the positive of the whole situation. Okay. Um, you are six at home right now, right? I mean, it's you, it's Jackie, your partner, you have three kids, your mom, and you have all the animals, and uh, yeah. you are cooking most of the time, right? Or you're cooking all the time? Are you, are you cooking all the time, or is somebody I'm, else I'm cooking? trying to cook all <laughs> no, it's like uh, 
it, I, I, I could let Jackie cook because she can cook the lunch or something like this, but I just, I, I love cooking. So I, this is what I love doing and just mm -hmm. even making uh, sandwiches or shakshuka for breakfast or something like this, uh, um, or turning on the grill and putting, I, I made a really good smoked chicken uh, last week. Um, it's just fun. It's just what, what I enjoy doing. And, um, okay. How judgmental are you for other people's food? Judgmental? Yeah, it's a question. Judgmental. No, I think I think I think chefs, um, because we're used to cooking for other people all the time, we're just grateful that somebody else is doing cooking. Okay. So we, we love other people cooking for us. Uh, I think it's different because if so, if I go to somebody's house and he's cooking for me, it's it's it's, it's an honor. It's not yeah. it's not a it's not an academic uh, time to sit and inspect every small element in a dish. If you go to a restaurant, then you look at it from a professional perspective. It's something mm. else. Yeah. Um, but if, if Jackie would cook for me, I would just be grateful somebody's cooking for me for once. And is, is, she, the moment... is she stressed cooking for you? <laughs> no. Uh, no, she, I don't think she is. Uh, she's more, uh, she's very judgmental about food in general, which makes her mm -hmm. a very good companion. Uh, in that, so and whenever she is cooking, she's more worried about disappointing herself rather than what I might say about it. Okay. Um, let's let's go back to glass. Uh, glass was your first uh, restaurant in Berlin, in Germany, yes. and it was open in 2013. And the Michelin star was always there. I mean, as a as part of the working plan, but it never happened. Um, and uh, knowing what you know today, is there something that you think you could you you would be able to change? I mean, do you think that you could do something different in, in these terms? I mean, in this restaurant with this uh, space with this budget. So it's really funny because um, we talked about it also yesterday, and mm. I already said that uh, it wasn't always on the plan. So. When I started, it, was, it wasn't the plan. So it dictated uh, what the place was in terms of uh, real estate. Yeah. So if I would have aimed for a star when I opened, I probably would have taken a different place, but I didn't. I was looking for shock and effect and uh, getting a, a more unique location. Uh, and I think- But, but uh, you did, I mean, you did have it in mind because I mean, you were told also that it's uh, Michelin, uh, quality, so it was not now totally up uh, out of out of space. The idea, I mean, of of getting Michelin star over there also. It, no, it came it came in the, basically after the opening, so it wasn't part of the whole planning, which made the the transition to saying, okay, we think we can get a Michelin star, let's go for it. Kind of a more um, patchy. Uh, experience because it kind of made us without the, a budget basically kind of always build up the restaurant towards something. Mm -hmm. So I would have bought different wine glasses, different cutlery, different plates, uh, okay. chose a different location, would have gotten tablecloths yeah. at the opening, uh, different, yeah. definitely different, definitely different chairs. Uh, the place would have looked different. Um, the idea was to open something which was on the idea of a modern bistro in the whole idea of um, casual fine dining movement and it became just fine dining fine dining but it just took time okay um, i've had a conversation yesterday um after we talked so i talked to jackie about this and there was mm -hmm. a very interesting i had a very interesting question which i still don't think i can answer but is whether uh, we have stayed longer as glass would, would we have still gotten that michelin star and i think I think I don't know because there is uh, so much in the in the infrastructure here and so much in the that we can do in prism in prism couldn't do in glass okay that enables us to to be better that enables us to to be the better versions of ourselves in terms because of, of the wine in terms of the service okay because the restaurant is meant for the so that that was actually one that, what I want to ask now. I mean, so Prism was constructed from the first day as a Michelin nominee for you. 
I mean, I know from I mean, I know from the day of the opening, but I mean, from the day that you took. Not the nominee. But a restaurant, a Michelin restaurant. So, for for me, the the. All from, um, a great accomplishment for us, but it is, mm -hmm. but it's not, it, does, it doesn't feel like we've done some incredible sensation. It's for us, we've reached our goals for the yeah. first year. Okay. So while I'm incredibly overwhelmed by the moment and uh, <laughs> super happy about it, it wasn't meant to be as, as anything uh, less than that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um... Okay, and uh, yeah, yeah, so glass started as a um, fine dining European style, and then you changed your concept. I mean, you became, you went back to what you really wanted to do, in a way, no? Uh, doing Middle Eastern or Levantine fine dining. I, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's... Uh what I wanted to do. Um, I, I actually, I always kind of ran away from it. So okay. uh, I, I was, um, I was always kind of afraid of the, of the tagging uh, of Israeli food or is, what is Israeli fine dining. Um, so I tried to avoid, actively avoid putting these flavors into my food. So in the third year of the restaurant, we started doing this. Um, one of the snacks in the canapé was a falafel with mm -hmm. uh, uh, sardines and uh, yogurt. And it was really good. And, but I forced the waiters to say a chickpeas croquette because I didn't want the waiters to say falafel. So it wouldn't be uh, tagged as, oh, the chef from Israel is doing falafel. Because mm -hmm. from before I opened, uh, I had these kind of expectations about me you need to do Israeli food, but I don't want to do Israeli food. It's not, what's, not who I am or who I was at the time. And it took me time to kind of get to that place where I feel comfortable uh, with where I'm coming from and with the flavors of where I'm coming from. Uh, because it's not flavors I grew up on. It's more uh, academic perspective of looking back at your roots. Uh, and it's kind of an interesting experience. And it took me time to be ready for that. It took me time to be um, mature enough to be able to handle that uh, emotional process of finding that. And I'm not saying it as a criticism, I mean, but also, I mean, you told me a few months ago, I'm cooking, I'm cooking food from the place that I come from. So it's not Israeli, it's not Arabic, it's from it's the region where I grew up in, right? It, Can't you? It's the idea of, of it's, it's the idea of finding your roots. It's not a, a it's a land, basically. It's a part yeah. of the world that I come from has unique animals that grow there and you eat them. Has a unique cheese culture. Has unique uh, herbs has unique uh, spice, uh, has fruits, and sorry, and that's that's the part of what I, what I'm trying to connect with. I'm taking this as a tool and basically trying to create something new. Basically, cook myself. Okay. Um... It doesn't. It doesn't. I don't aspire some sense of authenticity that I would say I'm making something like my grandmother did or somebody's grandmother did. Sometimes yeah. it happens, but it's not the intention. Yeah. So you, you don't feel yourself chained to the traditions because it's also not your traditions in a way. Exactly. Okay. I, 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 think, I think that authenticity has its place. It's just not the place that I want to cook from. Yeah. Okay. Um... So uh, in prison, I mean, as I started to say before, I mean, it was built as a Michelin star restaurant. Uh, it happened in the end of the first year. Everything has planned. And then two weeks after, you have to close. 
Did you get the shield, by the way, already? <laughs> Did they send it? No, it's, uh, we're, supposed, we're supposed to get it in a, in a ceremony on the 29th of April. For some reason, mm. I also don't see that one happening. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'll probably get it in the mail. So <laughs> it will still be... I just want it. I, I don't really... I know. It's, it's you know, uh, of all the things... I got the I got the jacket with uh, that I was supposed to wear in the gala. Okay. With the star thing, and um, and I got the bag. Um, but I have to admit that the shield next to the door is, I don't know why, but as a chef, it's always been the the one thing that actually matters. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't know how mm -hmm. to explain it because it's just something that you're used to, kind of walking into a restaurant and saying every day being reminded of what it means to be a mission star restaurant. Okay. And, um, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I mean, do you, do you have this feeling sometimes that, I mean, why? I mean, why, why does this happen to me? <laughs> I mean, you work so hard for it in the next, in the last seven years, eight years, and then, and then you don't have your moment. I mean, you don't get your moment in the you end. Know, it's, really, it's really funny because we had this, uh, Two weeks, so they cancelled the, the ceremony, um, and then we, we got uh, announced that we got the Michelin star. And uh, watching it on Facebook was definitely less uh, exciting than uh, going on stage and putting on a, a jacket uh, and eating free caviar and drinking champagne. But that's not. But that's not what why we do it anyway. But um, you. You, we had two weeks to basically be open as a Michelin star restaurant. Mm -hmm. And it was the, really the best two weeks I ever had owning a restaurant. Um, it was just amazing. Uh, the, the guests, the, the feeling, the team, everything was just perfect. And having tasted that, uh, I'm kind of confident that whatever is coming next is just going to be more of the same. So, I, yes, there is a part of me that is uh, heartbroken that I've worked for it so hard and uh, now it's gone, like that, that feeling, but it's not the end. So I know it's coming back and we just have to be patient and wait and see. Yeah, uh, let's, let's talk about, I mean, how Germany and Berlin especially handled the uh, situation. Um, so you are, you are in Berlin, so you're in a good position because even in Berlin, it's, uh, you have greater help, uh, not just what the state gives, but also directly from the city. Um, how does it feel? I mean, you feel you chose right? I, I, <laughs> I always say that I don't feel comfortable talking about it because I always think about my... Uh, Israeli friends and colleagues who are uh, right now uh, yeah, but that's not your fault. Their, uh, hearing for their life and livelihood and I'm kind of sitting here and saying listen things are very calm I feel like I'm on vacation um, but Berlin has been um, I'm, I'm here for eight years and I've gone through some really bad moments in my life in Berlin and um, I feel at home here and therefore I have uh, uh, the Berlin skyline t tattooed on my hand um, but the thing is that this is the first time that I was really kind of shocked by how much it actually matters to live in Berlin. Um, mm -hmm. Those of you who don't know, so Berlin, uh, um, bureaucracy, bureaucracy in Germany is literally a, 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 a form of art. So if you ask what are Germans good at, it's a, a soccer and a bureaucracy. Uh, and basically, and I think um, it's kind of this magical moment that uh, you file, usually everything here takes time, everything. Uh, but for the one time that, you know, you, you write, you fill up a simple form, file it on Sunday, on Tuesday afternoon, 15,000 euros are in your bank account. It just gives you the feeling that everything is fine. You don't need to worry. You don't need to to go out of your way to to worry how you're going to survive. You're just going to survive. 
um, we wrote letters to all our health insurance for providers, tax authorities, everybody to ask for uh, postponements and races and all that for the timing. You don't get no, you don't get no. Everybody says yes. And basically you get to a position where you're basically, the financial health of the business is, is you're not losing money. We are not, we are not earning money, yes, but we're not losing money by, hmm. by being, by continuing to exist. Yeah. And it's just a great feeling because you're going through really the definition of an act of God, uh, really the definition of something that is out of your control. And instead of having to worry about your livelihood, your career, your, your future, you get to stay at home and say, you know, I really want to just go on a walk with my dogs today because it's a really nice day. And I think we're lucky. And I think we're very lucky uh, to be able to do that and say that. And I wish it was like this in other places. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, in that way, I mean, I also, I mean, you feel grateful for living in a welfare state. I mean, and, and in this case, especially, I mean, because Germany is doing everything which is non-German in that, in that, uh, in that way. I mean, just doing it without, without the bureaucracy, without sp uh, spending time. And I mean, it's really, it's, I, I, I can say, I mean, it's really overwhelming. Gal, you there? I don't know how many of our listeners, I don't know how many of our listeners have experience with the German tax authorities, uh, but the German tax authorities have a tendency of being very, um, it's kind of the most stiff bureaucratic arm in Germany, uh, because all the money is technically not your money, it's the state's money. Uh, VAT, um, employees, income tax, it's not your money. Um, and they treat it as such. And you send the list back saying the answer is yes. But please, before the end of next month, which is a very long deadline, please explain to us why. Please explain to us how your business got hurt by Corona and how much of a postponement you need or what do you need. And I think that's just, that's just great because it's very not German. So the German normal way would have been, please explain to us why. But here they're saying, yes, but please explain to us why. And I think that's, they're really going out of their skin, which is a great, great feeling. Yeah. Um, how, I mean, when you're talking to colleagues uh, these days, I mean, other chefs, I mean, what, what, what do you talk about? I mean. You can't talk about the service last night. You can't talk about the critics in the well, newspaper. Going insane of not doing anything. People who choose this is a is, is it just they, uh, something and go this this is different I, I, I can't hear at all girl I mean the connection is really bad I think is it just me no I guess not I think girl left us <laughs> girl Let's wait a second uh, girl is back Wait. Okay. There you are. Was I talking for myself? Uh, now I hear you again. If you can repeat it, because I, di I didn't hear anything. I don't know about the others. Um, I said that basically, I think that people that work in this time of work choose choose this life. So we're in it for the action and we're in it for um, basically the everyday work of it. And I think most of the chefs right now are concerned with a uh, growing board uh, of this uh, routine. We're not used to being home. We're not used to home life. I think uh, a lot of us are in relationships which are uh, working the way they are and are now being uh, challenged. 
uh, by a new conception of it. Uh, yeah. Okay. The rate of shift. Uh, I'm, I'm putting. I'm putting uh, um, that the rate of chef divorces are going to be higher than the average population. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, uh, couples who are with, with both are working in the same industry? No, we're just. I, I give the example of Jackie and me. It's like we work really well as a team in a certain um, living condition because we're used to working all the time and then kind of we can excuse one another because we also work together. Yeah. Suddenly we don't have the work element of it and our relationship is very testing uh, because of the other aspects. Hmm. So uh, we're, we're, we're rediscovering uh, what it would be a normal couple. Uh, yeah, now I can hear you. Um, okay, <clears throat> you you told you told us yesterday. I mean, you are you keep working on the future menus right now, uh, and you said I mean you can still do it in the ho in the domestic kitchen, but is it harder for you? I mean, you can't explore. I mean, you live in the village. You are isolated from. The ingredients you are isolated from the uh, from your suppliers. I mean, is it more challenging? I, I am not isolated from my suppliers. I get deliveries. You get deliveries all the way there. Uh, God, can't but, can't hear. You. Yeah, um, the ones that matter. I think we can't hear you. I feel like technology is against me. <laughs> Yesterday it was really good. Uh, can, can you say it again? Because we did, I yeah, don't think nobody. Yesterday was really good. I don't yeah. German, um, German. We... Yeah. Uh, so we have some deliverers that uh, keep supporting us and keep providing us with ingredients that are relevant for my testing at this point. Um, if something came up that I needed to test and wasn't, I would have gone to Berlin for it, but I didn't come across that yet. Okay. I don't need to test how, how to cook a fish. That's the question. Okay. Um, how, how do you see the day after? I mean, you think it will be a boom of, of clients coming in or do you think it will take time? I mean, once it's over. Yeah, I think, I think that people miss it. I think that's the moment that this opens in whatever way it opens, be it international flights or be it um, restaurants, it, it's just going to explode the next day because people want this people it's part of it's part of my life i miss it yeah. uh, and i think it's just going to be it's just going to continue where it stopped i think it's even okay. going to be a bit more um concentrated because there's going to be like this what everybody was looking forward to and what is the now so um, in case they start, they decide um, to reopen, but only during the daytime. I mean, until six, like they did in Italy now. Would you consider to open for lunch? Yes. I, I, I before I was a bit uh, apprehensive about this. I have to admit, yeah. I wasn't very excited about the idea of doing lunch. Uh, but now, now I would actually actively consider it because I, I just, I miss it. I just miss it too much. Not, not because of the money, but because of the action. Exactly. Yeah. Not action, but it, 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 there is really no greater gift for, for to, the, the reason that I do what I do 
and, and go for fine dining and for that level of an experience is that there is no greater gift than the happy look on a customer's face. We don't do it for ourselves. We do it to see, to make other people happy. And um, yeah. I can't do it without it. So yeah. I miss that part. Okay. I miss my guests. I guess they, I, I'm sure they miss you also. Um, okay. Do we have questions? Uh, somebody wants to ask a question. Uh, you can also write it in the chat if you want me to ask I think, it. I think, I think Odelia has a question. Odelia, you want to ask something? I don't have a question per se. I just want to say that I think you're very lucky you're in Germany and in Berlin. Uh, talking to colleagues here in Israel, uh, I think they're all on antidepressants by now. If they weren't on them before. If they weren't before. Yeah. But mm. the situation here is completely different. And, and your optimism and your enthusiasm are, are so surprising because I live in a completely different world. I think, I mean, in that way, I, I yeah, mean, I, 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 I in Germany, not just, kind of not just if you compare it to Israel, but also this. if you compare it to Italy or to Spain, I mean, or to, or to France. I mean, it's, first, it's a very rich state, and second, I mean, it didn't hit us as bad as it, as it was in other states, I think. Leadership, leadership and good health care makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. And the pockets. <laughs> Uh, well, we pay a lot of taxes, and yeah. it's nice to get them back somehow. Yeah. It's um, also nice to feel that the state actually works for you. Could I ask yeah. a question? Yeah, of course. Of course. Hi, Gal. Um, my name is Dan. Um, my question is, uh, if uh, considering that living in Germany makes the situation quite comfortable, um, do you think that having this time to reflect will uh, benefit your work when you come back in some way? Definitely, 100%. So my perspective on, on, on coming back to work is, so I, in, in the same way that I think that um, guests have this eagerness to go back, I have this eagerness to go back. So for me, it's like I want to go back the better version of myself, the best. It's all about creating more of experience. I've had uh, so much time to kind of um, improve myself. Um, I've spent the, I've talked about it yesterday, I've spent the six months between Glass and Prism to basically improve, um, to, to create the bread program, which is something that I was uh, lacking in knowledge on. I literally taught myself bread in six months. Uh, so now I'm uh, spending the time on improving other aspects of our program during these six months, uh, six months, hopefully one month. And uh, we're uh, working on a new wine list and it's basically, we're just, it, it's, it's, again, I don't need the next day as, a, as some sort of a challenge of coming back from an abyss. I'm coming more or less on the same wavelength that I left. So it kind of allows me to come back stronger. Okay, thanks. Any more questions? Somebody wants to know something more. I'm willing to answer everything. <laughs> he is. He's not just saying that. I'm not just saying that. For those wondering, I'd rather fight uh, one horse-sized duck than thousand duck-sized horses. <laughs> No, I think I'm and sorry if you stay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Carl, again, <laughs> for, for being with us. And uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, we all, uh, you can all, I mean, I can open your mics if you want. Um, but um, 
Yeah, I mean, so thank you again for joining us and we will have it also online. I mean, it's being recorded. So um, I can also send it to you later. I mean, and you can have a look again on this talk. Thank you. Great, Thanks, thank God. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.